Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can replace your boring old checkbox with an iOS style switch button. We'll be using a combination of HTML and CSS without any need for JavaScript. After I show you the basics of creating the switch, I'll show you how easy it is to apply some fancy styling to really bring our switch to life. So let's get coding. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a label and Within our label, we'll add our checkbox that we will be restyling and converting into our switch. So let's create an input, the type of checkbox. And then we also need to add a div. And the div is what we're going to be styling, and that's what we'll actually be looking at. So let's go ahead and style that div. Oh, before I do that, I want to add a class of switch to my label, and then a class of switch-btn to my div. OK. So let's create the switch. Dot switch. Actually, let's create that switch btn. And we're going to give that a width of 80 pixels, a height of 40 pixels, and a background of, we'll give it a light gray. Okay, so we have that, and then I want to add the button that will be our toggle button. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a pseudo element on the switch btn, switch btn4, and then I'm going to say that I want, oh, First, let me set the position of our background to relative, and then the position of our button, the actual button, will be absolute. Okay, so I want that to have a height of 36 pixels because I want two pixels of padding on each side of the button and then also a width of 36 pixels and then I want that to have a background of white and then I also need to specify I want the left to be two pixels and I want the top to be 2 pixels. And then we won't see anything unless I put content and make sure that's empty. There we go. OK. So now, if I want to make this interactive, I need to tell it that when the checkbox is checked, to move my button to the right. So to do that, I'm going to say dot switch dash btn and then the sibling of an input type equals checkbox. Oh, sorry, this is backwards. I want and if I have an input and the type equals checkbox and it has a sibling of switch dash btn then I want before I want the left to be 40 
two pixels. And then I only want that applied if my checkbox is checked. So let's try this out. There we go. Okay. So one last thing is we, we don't want to look, have our normal checkbox showing, so we need to hide that. So let's say that switch, and we want that to be opacity of zero. And the reason that I did that is, see, you can't see, but I'm pushing the spacebar. If we set display none, display none, we won't see anything. But if we set opacity to zero, that just hides our checkbox. And then we can still, for accessibility, we can tab to change that. Okay, one thing I forgot is that I want the cursor to change to a pointer when I mouse over this so that we know that it's clickable. So to do that, that's easy. We just need to add a cursor. Winter to our switch BTN, and there now we, we can see that it's clickable. And then I also want to change the background color of the container when the switch is selected on. So, to do that, I'm just going to copy this here, but instead of ta uh, targeting the pseudo element, I want to target the container. And I'm going to say background. I'm going to make this a light green. So I'll just say 100, 255, 100. Now let's test this out. Okay, so now we have a light green when it's checked. And then one final thing is I want to animate this when I click it. So on the pseudo element, I want to give a transition and set that to all and set it to 150 milliseconds and ease out. Let's try this now. See, now we have a nice animated switch. Okay, so that wraps up the basics of creating a switch toggle. So far, it looks a bit better than a normal checkbox, and it's easier to click on on mobile devices, but I think we can make it look a lot better than it currently does. So the first thing that I wanted to do is that if you look at iOS, um, the toggles are usually rounded, so let's start by doing that. So that's really easy. Let's start with our background and we'll just say we want a border radius of 20 pixels which is half the height okay so now we got that rounded it looks good and then we need to do the same thing to our toggle button so let's say that we want the border radius to be 50 percent since it's a circle Okay, already that looks better. Now, I want to add a little bit of depth to it. So what I want to do is I want on our background, I want to give it an inset shadow. So let's say box shadow, we'll say inset, uh, zero pixels X, uh, two pixels for the Y, and we want to blur that say four pin I want to lower the opacity so we'll say make it about 50% opacity now let's go lower than that maybe 
30. Yeah. And then I want to bring it down, say about 10 pixels. I really want to blur it. Yeah, I'll keep it like that. And then I want to do the same thing for my toggle button, but I want to give it a regular drop shadow. So we'll say box shadow zero, zero, now we'll say two pixels. Two pixel blur and then I want that to be about twenty five percent. And I'm going to bring in this blur a bit, so I'm going to give it a negative four pixel spread. I want to bring it down for I also want to blur it a bit more. Okay, I like that. And then I also, instead of making the uh, button white, I want to give it a subtle uh, gradient. I'll say linear gradient. We'll start at white and then down to let's say uh, two of two so how does that look yeah that, that's a bit better and that green is a bit much Let's fix that. Okay, so let's go ahead and replace this neon green with something a little bit more subtle. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so there's our toggle button. We've restyled it, made it look a lot better. Uh, I hope you liked this video and found it useful. I'll be creating more videos on creating different UI components. So if you like that kind of thing, make sure that you subscribe. If you create any cool looking switch toggles, send me the link because I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.